Dr. Richa is an infertility and IVF specialist with a fellowship in ART from Kiel School of Gynecological Endoscopy and Reproductive Medicine, Germany. She is a consultant at Fortis Hospitals in New Delhi. She has a special interest in PCO patients and egg donation in IVF. Dr. Richa writes articles and columns for international journals, scientific publications and newspapers and appears regularly on discussions on health on television. Today's topic is low molecular weight heparin for treatment of recurrent IVF failures. What are heparin and low molecular weight heparin? What is the mechanism of action of these drugs? What is the use of giving heparin in ART? What do various studies say? What does Cochrane say? What is the future? What are the ongoing studies with this topic? The conclusion and the take home message. A recurrent IVF failure is as emotionally traumatizing for the patient as much as it is perplexing for the treatment physician. It is diagnosed when repeatedly good quality embryos fail to implant in several IVF cycles. The causes may originate either with the mother or with the embryo. Now this is a long but not an exhaustive list of the causes of recurrent implantation failure. I am not going to go into the detail. The punchline is that if we have good quality embryos, no obvious pathology in the mother and easy transfer and yet the cycles are failing, then this we will classify as a recurrent IVF failure. Now we have three questions in our minds. The first is, is it that ART per se increases the risk of thrombosis? That means, is it that the injections or the drugs which I am giving for IVF are leading to a procoagulant tendency in the patient's body. If this is so, it means that minute blood clots are forming in the blood vessels in the uterus which are leading to the implantation failure. The second question which comes in our mind is, or is it that patients who have recurrent implantation failure themselves have a thrombotic activity? And the third question is, is it that low molecular weight heparin has any other beneficial effects apart from the anticoagulant action. And I will discuss all three one by one. But first, a very brief overview of the medicines. Heparin is a naturally occurring polysaccharide that inhibits coagulation. It has molecular chains of varying lengths and weights ranging from 5,000 to 40,000 Daltons. The difference between heparin and low molecular weight heparin is that low molecular weight heparin is formed by snipping small fragments of the larger molecule and they are shorter chains of the polysaccharide having average weights of less than 8000 Daltons. The advantage of using low molecular weight heparin over conventional heparin are two. One is the ease of administration because low molecular weight heparin can be given by a subcutaneous route. Very often the patients can be taught to take the injection themselves. And second is the daily dose of administration. Heparin needs to be taken up to four times a day, while low molecular weight heparin can be given just once a day. US FDA and WHO give a word of caution that the various low molecular weight heparins like inoxaparin or daltiparin should be considered as individual products and not considered clinically equivalent as their molecular and structural properties differ. Now coming to the first question, how does low molecular weight heparin prevent recurrent implantation failure? We know that in the body, coagulation is a chain of events involving various protease enzymes, ultimately leading to the conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin. Heparin or low molecular weight heparin acts at many levels in this coagulation cascade, inhibiting the conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin and ultimately forming a clot. The lesser well-known effects of low molecular weight heparin are the immunomodulatory effects. Low molecular weight heparin has been shown to have effects on the acute inflammatory responses in the body. It acts as a molecular sponge by virtue of its charge and attracts and binds inflammatory mediators responsible for implantation failure. It has also been shown to have a weak direct immunosuppressive action in vitro and in vivo. 
with every cloud is a silver lining and with the silver lining of low molecular heparin we have a cloud of leading allergic reactions injection site reactions and asymptomatic increase in the liver enzymes there is also a 1% incidence of severe side effects like heparin induced thrombocytopenia which is of two types a type 1 clinically benign non immune and reversible form and a type 2 which is rare more serious and immune mediated coming to the first question does art increase the risk of thrombosis danish national cohort study published in human reproduction in 2012 collected data from more than 30000 women in more than 75000 ivf cycles from 1994 to 2005 the mean age of these women was 32.3 years and the delivery rate per cycle was 22%. The incidence of venous and arterial thrombosis within 6 months of the IVS processes were compared with known estimates of the risk of thrombosis in young Danish women and they found no evidence that ART increases the risk of thrombosis. So we can conclude from this study that all women who are undergoing IVF will not benefit from low molecular weight heparin treatment and it cannot be given as a blanket therapy. The second question, do patients with recurrent implantation failure have thrombotic activity? Angela Martinez Zamora conducted a study, reduced plasma fibrinolytic potential in patients with recurrent implantation failure after IVF eating. She compared the plasma clot retraction time in three groups of patients, 30 women with recurrent implantation failure, 60 patients with the first successful IVF ET cycle, and 60 healthy fertile women. She concluded that patients with recurrent implantation failure have a reduced plasma fibrinolytic potential as evident by their prolonged clot retraction time and that patients with recurrent implantation failure have thrombotic activity and therefore should benefit by low molecular weight heparin treatment. Now I will go through four studies demonstrating the use of low molecular weight heparin in women with recurrent implantation failure. This is the first study conducted by Lodigiani et al. It was a retrospective observational analysis of women who had undergone more than two IVF ICSI cycles with recurrent implantation failure. They compared 265 patients with 569 new ART cycles, 512 women were giving placebo and 57 patients were treated with low molecular weight heparin. Now if you look carefully at this bar graph, we can see in green that the women who were given low molecular weight heparin, they are showing pregnancy rates of 36% as opposed to the graph in orange which shows a 16% pregnancy rate in women who were given placebo. Now, although this graph looks very impressive, these results were not found to be statistically significant. The second study conducted by Anne et al. compared the effect of low molecular weight treatment with other anticoagulants like warfarin. Using mouse strains in which different pathways and individual components related to thrombus formation were checked and she concluded that the effect of low molecular weight heparin on pregnancy loss was not based by its antithrombin and anticoagulant property which means that there are other effects of low molecular weight heparin which are also into play. The third study conducted by Fiedler et al and published in 2004 effectivity of heparin in ART said that the effects of heparin are not restricted to anticoagulation but that heparin is involved in the addition of blastocyst to the endometrial epithelium, a very crucial stage in IVF. They concluded that prolonged heparin treatment of more than 14 days results in increased pregnancy rate and that shorter courses of heparin are not effective. My last study, number four, by Neelam Poddar published in Human Reproduction Update in 2013 adjunct low molecular weight heparin to improve live birth rate after recurrent implantation failure, a meta-analysis. Studies comparing low molecular weight heparin versus a control or placebo were collected from databases, Medline, Cochrane, conferences from 1980 to 2012, 
statistical analysis was done and the outcome measure was life birth rate. The results, in women with more than three recurrent implantation failures, 245 women, they showed a significant improvement in the life birth rate and a reduction in the miscarriage rate. However, the beneficial effect of low molecular weight heparin was not significant when only studies with unexplained recurrent implantation failure were pooled. She gave a very remarkable conclusion that eight women would require to be treated to achieve one extra life birth. So a lot of studies and a lot of con con confusion and we ultimately go to the Cochrane database to see what they have to say. The review question for the researchers in the Cochrane collaboration was, the effect of administration of heparin around the time of implantation compared with a placebo or no treatment on the clinical outcome in subfertile women undergoing ART. Three studies with 386 participants were studied, subfertile women undergoing ART and low molecular weight heparin in daily injections was given to women from the time of pickup or embryo transfer. Now the results. They said that low molecular weight heparin may increase live birth rate and clinical pregnancies, but all these studies need to be interpreted with extreme caution as the quality of trial evidence was poor. There were side effects like bruising and bleeding, and the long-term efficacy and safety of these medicines is not established. The evidence did not justify the use outside research trials, which were a priority. So what is the future? A lot of research is ongoing and US National Health Institute has funded a big study in National and Capodistrian University of Athens, role of LMWH in poor responders undergoing IVF. European Union Clinical Trials Register is also ongoing with a study, weight adjusted low molecular weight heparin in RIF, a randomized controlled trial of infertile patients with at least three failed ART cycles. We are waiting with bated breath for the reports of these studies. So what is the take home message? That low molecular weight heparins have definite roles in the known procoagulant disorders like lupus anticoagulant and anticardiolipin antibodies. In patients with recurrent implantation failure, they have a definite value by their anticoagulant and their immunomodulatory effects. Further studies are ongoing and the results are awaited. Is there any role in the first IVF? We have yet to see. Thank you.